Hello, and welcome back to the second part of the Chris Char Compass is an Idiot Let's Play. I'm Kurt Collada, and I am doing this in commemoration of both Columbus Day 2016, and also because one of the characters here is uh, very clearly patterned after Donald Trump. And uh, since he is currently terrifying most of the free world with his election run right now, it's sort of interesting to look back and see about the parody that I created back in uh, about 2012, uh, which was a lot more naive and innocent. So obviously the I've gotten already into uh, starting it here. Uh, you go back to the strip club, and there are three different, uh, three or four different people that you could talk to, and these are the three quests for the uh, Nina, Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. So this guy I'm talking to right now is Columbus's old buddy Coronado, who uh, who forces you to reminisce about some of your old college days before he'll let you have the information about the, the ship you need to find. Uh, the whole three quest thing was was obviously patterned after uh, the whole three trials thing of the Secret of Monkey Island, which a lot of other uh, Lucas Arts games and a lot of other Adventure games did too. Uh, the main problem that I sort of worked out is there are there's the three ships, the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria, but uh, none of the there's nothing distinctive about them. Like when you think of the Nina, like there's nothing there. So I often had uh, my own quest lines confused. Like I'd graph everything out. Like, oh, this does this particular quest line go in with the Nina? Does it go with the Santa Maria? And uh, that was if it was confusing for me during designing it, it was probably confusing for whoever was going to be playing it. So of course I apologize for that. Ah, uh, yeah. the uh, The Donald Trump XP is Archibald Horn. Uh, that should be pretty obvious. Uh, for this particular playthrough, I'm just mostly going with the one plot thread to get the Nina and just sort of avoiding some of the other stuff just to not be too confusing. Uh, except for talking for this guy, Pablo Rico, the sensitive poet. Um, he is involving with another character that we'll sort of meet later on. Uh, and then if I either do another Let's Play, you can kind of see it. Or you can play it yourself if you feel like devoting the time to it. Um, Uh, so that was going to be a running gag. Whenever you use an item and you wouldn't have any more need for it, it would just break or explode or something that would sort of take it out of your inventory. So you uh, would sort of declutter everything. Anyway, here's the Nina, which has a, a scribbling of a woman's face on it for some reason. And also a pile of flint sticks, which is uh, required for a kind of ridiculous series of puddles, pu puzzles later on. So uh, one of the little bits of feedback I got about this was that there's way too much running around. And going back and replaying this a couple years later, I can definitely agree with that. Like, there's, there's really no reason that you have to talk to this guy. Go out and find the ship and then go back and talk to him again. Other than just, you know, patting it out and adding more dialogue. Um, and this guy was kind of boring anyway. Uh, he was just talking like bro-speak. So this is one of the quote-unquote death sequences that you can get, and this one you can just, uh, since the stripper stage is empty now, you can play around with this and then... Yeah. I am amused that I kept the whole stripper animation for this whole scene, and he's talking, and the uh, the nipple tassels are just kind of twirling there, and the uh, the super dramatic music that that plays every time the the unseen death narrator talks about anything, and gets mad that he's being slut shamed, and then goes back to work. So speaking of which, here's uh, Horn Tower where. In order to get an audience with them, so you could uh, potentially fix up that boat, you need to audition for an apprentice-like thing where you become his assistant through some dumb game show. Um, the the receptionist here at the hotel, this is just kind of a placeholder where I used the same sprite that was for Abuelita, the stripper, and just kind of hastily wrote some dialogue that they were like sisters. Uh, it's something that was either going to be kept in as like a like a winky wink, wink to the laziness of it, or would be changed to something else, because uh, it's just kind of stupid. Like I realized halfway through designing it that uh, 
most of the female characters I had had were either uh, were strippers, which was kind of bad. Uh, so I created another character, which you'll you'll see later on. But unfortunately, she doesn't do much. Uh, she was meant to do stuff in the later chapters, which is similar for a lot of other characters here. So this is the the quiz show part, which I'm actually pretty pretty proud of. How ridiculous and goofy this works out, even though the puzzles don't really make sense. So you're just sort of uh, tossed in here without any real instructions. What's this guy's name? I think it was Rock Powell, but he has <laughs> he has such great dialogue. Uh, yeah. So this is the quiz show. Uh, what it was is, so at this point, you don't know any of the answers, so it's sort of on autopilot. I, I, I couldn't really find a way to communicate to the player that there's nothing that they could really do here. Uh, it just kind of goes. And also, a kind of a point of repetition that I wanted to change but never got around to is that this, this little dialogue of him introducing everybody is the same each time you do it. And you have to do it at, at least twice. Uh, more if you want to see the goofy dialogue option, so it's a little repetitive. So that, uh, that is Paro the Dog. That was taken from another game that I had previously made and put up on Hardcore Gaming 1 called Que Pasa Paro. Um, he has the same sort of, I don't, I don't even know what kind of dog, uh, dog breed is supposed to be. Uh, his name came up because one of the only places that actually wrote about it was, uh, I believe Adventure Gamers. And uh, I think the guy who wrote about it, even though I was super appreciated that he wrote anything about my stupid little game, uh, I think he misunderstood that the name of the dog was actually Pero, which Pero is, of course, Spanish for dog. So that's how his name is Pero here. And of course, the joke is that even though this entire game takes place in Spain, everybody speaks English and nobody outside of the dog speaks Spanish. And uh, everybody's just confounded that, you know, Spanish is just this gibberish language. And uh, the gas cloud over there was just kind of internally referred to as the Star Control 2 gas cloud. Uh, sort of like the Sly Landros, those weird little gas things that you meet in the game. So, so the whole point of this is that you need to steal the notes from the dog. In order to do it, you need to build up enough static electricity so that when you pet him, you'll fry him so he'll run away. Uh... <sighs> I can't even defend this later on because I, I, I tried to figure out ways that would communicate to the player that this is something you would do. And you can't see it right now, but uh, when you try to leave here after you've built up a static charge, it'll say, like, well, I've been zapped. And that'll sort of clue the player into what they're supposed to be doing. And there's three different ways to build up static electricity. There's uh, when you run across the, the carpet in the middle of the room. There's uh, right now what I'm doing is talking to the gas cloud, and eventually when you conferred him in the gibberish enough he'll get mad and then shock you and then the other way which I sort of forgot when I was playing this was that you take the towel from earlier in the game and just rub it on yourself uh, I think at some point I had actually thought about reducing the number of shocks down from three to two but I guess that wasn't in this build oh yeah here I try to put put the rabbit on me and that Yeah, this is me stumbling over my own design. It's pretty brilliant. Okay, now I got it, and then you zap him. Uh, this I even kind of admitted to myself at this point that this was a ridiculous puzzle, and I actually created an alternate solution to this. Uh, one of the main things is that I didn't want the puzzle lines to cross over too much. So if you did, um, 
you would only like if you started on one quest, you would never need to jump to another quest line in order to finish that one. Um, but I sort of broke that for the alternate solution. Later on, there's a, a female dog that you can find sort of hidden off later um, in one of the other quests, and you can give it to him, and it'll distract the dog so you can take it. Um, and, and later in this video, there's something that I also kind of broke that. Like, the, the way it was designed, you're supposed to talk to everybody in the bar and exhaust all the opportunities. Um, so a little later on in this video, I get stuck. I'm going to have to go back and talk to them. Because you were supposed to get introduced to everything right there. And here you go back to, you know, your smart guy buddy and he translates everything for you. Uh, you just have to remember what everything is. Otherwise it's, you know, it barely qualifies as a puzzle at this point. And you notice here that uh, the computer's automatically buzzing in for Columbus and then gives you the chance to to uh, respond to them. And right now I'm picking uh, pass for everything. Just because, you know, I like to put in uh, all sorts of alternate things so the game would actually respond to this kind of stupid things that you would do. Yeah, that, that bit of dialogue was specifically if you just go in and immediately buzz in and then pass. And here I'm going to answer all the questions correctly now. Uh, I do really love the music that was composed for this, and especially the, the buzzing sound is just, you know, it's really goofy sounding. Okay, so we've beaten this part now, and now we get to meet Archibald Horn. Oh yeah, there's a little thing about getting zapped. So I spent a lot of time animating the stupid elevator animations, and it's still kind of glitchy. Um, so yeah, for for making a uh, Donald Trump play character, I didn't actually want to make him too close to him. Like, like obviously he's based around the fact that he's extremely rich and extremely stupid. And uh, there's a toupee joke taken up to a, a new level with uh, the beaver on his head. But he doesn't really look like him very much. Uh, and he's just kind of an asshole. The way I, I wrote him, uh, I sort of pictured the character Gilbert Lamb from uh, the game Beneath the Seal Sky. And uh, there's actually a line that is quoted directly from him. Uh, the whole beavers, I don't give a damn about beavers sort of thing. Um, I really liked Gilbert Lamb. And one of, the, one of the things I liked about Broken Sword was that it sort of... Uh, took uh, one of the characters, I forget her name, and sort of uh, like a relative of her and turned her into a current character, and I really wish they would have brought back Gilbert Lamb, even though he doesn't technically exist in that same universe timeline, but go play Beneath the Steel Sky. So here's the hint that uh, in order to get the beaver off of the head, uh, you need to get him to take a shower. And here is him quoting Conan the Barbarian for some reason. <laughs> I found this extravagant detestable. If only I had used the word deplorable, then it would seem eerily prescient. Yeah, the opening and closing was a glitch I couldn't figure out what to do. Okay, so here's this, this series of puzzles which I had to sort of guide the player in, because again, it doesn't really make any sense. So the whole idea is there were three items that you would need to get from. There's the, the steel paper, the flint uh, sticks, which you'd use as a pencil, uh, and this is pretty much, you know, easy stuff that is either directly told to the player or you we kind of assume. But the, the only real part of this you have to do is you have to spike the ink with uh, gunpowder. So when he writes something with ink, it'll blow up. You know, blow up the ink, and then if it'll cause him to take a shower. Then you can steal it. Um, so he drops the name of the island for Two Island, which isn't really all that clever. It's just uh, a bit later on when we show the the map, it'll it'll make sense.
It's just some of the flavor text of the various rich crap around his room. A name sign. So now we need to go to the island to spike it with gunpowder. Um, here's another annoying thing. Well, actually, no. What we're going to do now is, this is something you don't need to do, but it sort of introduces uh, the point of this. Like, you can do it, it's just a context that isn't really established. The uh, the neighboring town of San Di Santiago was taken over by beavers. And, um... Uh, well, I'll explain what it is. Here are the, the different names of all the beavers, which I gave. I was going to make it randomized so every time you walked in and out, they would have different names. Brandanowitz was, I think, a character from Parks and Recreation, uh, uh, one nobody likes. Yeah, see, here's Ernesta, the, the one strong female character who, nonetheless, uh, at this point, just sits around and doesn't do anything. Um, she just talks about a revolution. Again, a lot of the characters in the first act were supposed to come back later in the game, and uh, she was supposed to actually be leading some sort of revolution, be a badass warrior chick. Um, I can't remember exactly why. Uh, she's also the girlfriend of that uh, sensitive poet we saw earlier on, and uh, there's another puzzle that you have to do with him and her, but uh, I'm not going to get involved in this because it's not related to this uh, puzzle thread. Let's see, if I were to bring the King's course back to him, that's what you're, you're doing with Horn now. Uh, a lot of the little scenes are just testing to do different things that I could sort of do with Adventure Game Studio. Like that scene uh, where he walks out of the castle back and forth as a, a sense of scale. Um, it was sort of designed to look like that one scene in Monty Python the Holy Grail where uh, the guy was like walking or running from the distance to the castle and it just slipping back and forth and eventually he was all of a sudden really close to where they were. So it's just supposed to be that, but um, fast paced. I think there was a, a path that I had drawn behind the the hill that uh, Columbus kind of walks on but the player can actually see in order to kind of give us a little delay uh, anyway so in order to actually use the cannon you need to get the map from uh, Francis Drake here which was uh, that thing referring to like I don't I don't know why I made the player need to go through this thing to get the map like it doesn't really make sense that I need to do this um, if I were ever to go back and fix it, I would just, you know, let you use the cannon right off. Although this this dialogue with the the Dom Deloise looking um, Francis Trick is pretty amusing, I guess. He's just the world's laziest, most incompetent pirate slash criminal. So this is actually the beginning of the plot thread to, to uh, find the Pinta, where uh, his captain had just sort of gone crazy and uh, drove off at some mysterious parts, and you have to decode a poem that uh, he had given, that he, the captain had written that sort of revealed where he was on the map. Uh, the whole thing was sort of a reference to that, uh, uh, there's some sort of poem in the third Gabriel Knight game that you need to spend like half the game studying in order to figure out something. And uh, I found that whole puzzle be super tedious, and even though a lot of people enjoy it. Um, I don't know why. Anyway, so to go to 4-2 Island is just the coordinates, 4-2. And this is where you are with all the fancy, silly-looking octopuses. And Takiyaki is gross. So here's where you take the gunpowder that you have, and then you just put it in the ink. And then we will trudge back to Archibald Horn. Yes, 
yeah, there it goes. Trap goes off and then uh, hops in the shower. So now you have the Beaver King, and this is pretty much the end of the quest. We just have to give it back to uh, Ernesta and the Beavers of Santiago. I like giving these uh, different choices to something, so you would sort of, uh, yeah, it's a good, good joke. Uh, but you could pick all of them. See, I think they are the obviously wrong options just to see how they would work out. So now you can go back to the docks, and you will see the Pinta there. And that's how it works for all the other ships. Once you find them, then they show up here. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, Maybe I will do a, another part of this to go to the one of the acts sometime on Columbus Day 2017. So thank you for watching.